Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. Out here cruising around in the Tacoma, it's always a bad thing to do. And I've decided I can't stand seeing other lifted Tacomas. I shouldn't say other lifted Tacomas because mine's not lifted at all. All I've got is a different offset on the, the wheels, pushes them out a little bit. It's a minus 10 and a little bit bigger tire, slightly, if anything maybe not even. And that's it. But as I'm out here cruising around, you know, down here in South Texas, it is truck country. And it is specifically Tacoma country. You can't go anywhere without seeing Tacomas around. And I would say probably maybe 80% of them are lifted. Lifted with bigger wheels and bigger tires and just an awesome looking stance. And I can't stand it. Now, I've mentioned before that I'm kind of considering lifting the Tacoma. It's actually more than just kind of considering, but it all depends on what I do with the next generation that's coming, whether or not I pick up this 2024 and win or not. I put out a video recently asking you guys if I'm nuts uh, for trading off this Tacoma, the third gen for the the fourth gen, I guess. And I'll be interested to look back and see what you guys have to say about it. But I'm kind of teetering a little bit now. And there are reasons in that video. I'm not going to regurgitate the whole video for you. But if I keep this truck, it's got to have a lift. It's got to. And I think with this color, you know, it has the electric lime green, which is a pretty in your face color, right? People love it. People hate it. Uh, but not usually in the middle. And I think the more aggressive you make the truck look, the better it looks. Not really dependent upon color, I suppose, but certainly with this electric lime. There goes, a truck just went by me, another lifted Tacoma. Oh my God, it looks gorgeous. There's, no, oh, that's a Ford Raptor. Okay, that was that's a different one. It, another truck though. But anyway, if I keep it, we're going to do a lift. And then it becomes, what kind of lift are you going to do? You know, I've been through this more than once. Block and spacer, suspension. Uh, there's all kinds of different things you can do, right? I don't want to do another block and spacer, that's for sure. That, to me, was a big fail. If you have a limited budget and you don't mind a, a rougher, more, uh, a tighter, rather, ride, then maybe a block and spacer is a good way to go. Not for me. I didn't like it. It was too firm, too rough. Felt like I hit every little pebble or I could feel every little pebble and bump in the road. So it has to be some sort of a suspension lift. Now, the last truck that I had, the magnetic gray metallic, I did adjustable bill steeds. I did only in the front. I just kind of leveled the truck out a little bit. And it made a a pretty substantial difference in the appearance of the truck. A lot of people asked me if I was lifted all the way around, when indeed I didn't do anything in the rear. Now, this time around, I want to do more than that. I'd like to go still staying with mostly a level lift. I mean, I don't mind a little bit of pointy nose in the front, but not much. In other words, it doesn't have to be perfectly level or as, as close as you can have it without the naked eye telling the difference, you know. But I think I have to go at least uh, maybe three to four inches. I'd like to go more. I, I'd like to go six. But I don't want to spend 10 grand or more on it either. But I would like to go probably three to three and a half inches. I had three and a half inches in the end on my Voodoo Blue Tacoma. The only problem with that is, is it kind of looked like it was getting ready to blast off. The front end came up too high. I needed to account for that in the rear. I never did, I should have. I think the truck would have looked absolutely awesome had I leveled out the truck and brought the rear end up to where the front was. Now, it wasn't a huge difference. It was only, I don't know, something like half an inch to three quarter inch. Nah, it wasn't three quarter inches. It's about half an inch or so, maybe a hair over. But nonetheless, it was still pretty darn visible to the naked eye. I saw it every time I looked at the truck, particularly in pictures and videos and things. I always saw that truck getting ready to blast off, you know. Now that's good if you're a, a Baja type guy and you're a gal and want to run that thing in races and stuff. I suppose that's a good thing. 
but it wasn't a good look for me. So I would go, I think, about three and a half inches uh, in the front, and then whatever it takes in the back to level that truck out. It would most likely be a little bit less than three and a half because the truck already points down in the front. So if you bring it up three and a half in the front, and bring it up three and a half in the rear, you're still gonna have that truck pointing down, right? So it might be, if I recall, it's something like a half an inch or so, something like that, uh, that the front would have to be a little bit lower. Now, that means I would go three and a half in the front and three inches in the rear, ideally. The problem is you can't, that I'm aware, achieve that with adjustable shocks. You have to go with some other suspension components to do it, and now you start to get into a bit more money, right? You might be into it five, six, seven thousand dollars by the time you figure in labor and components and everything you have to do to make sure the truck's right because you can't just do the lift you've got to change some other components as well because you're obviously going to be stretching things out brake lines uh, uv axles things like that so you want to make sure that you get that right and this is a four by four by the way so i do have uh, all of that other stuff to worry about differential drops, all that kind of stuff. Now, that makes me a little concerned because I have yet to find a place that I am real confident in. There is one shop down here that I think is pretty good. I'm not gonna mention anybody by name, but there is one that I think is pretty good. That's that's who I would most likely go to. So I just have to make sure that I can get in and, and get the truck back in a timely manner. You know, they're pretty busy, probably because they are good, you know. So anyway, I'm curious what you guys think about that. If you were lifting yours, and let's say that uh, budget's not a concern, which of course it always is, but let's just throw that out right now. What would you lift your truck to? And would you be concerned about any of these other issues uh, that creep up, having to change other things out, or even really the potential of damaging the truck? Because let's be honest, if you don't get it right, you might have a problem. In that Voodoo Blue truck that I mentioned, I had a problem in that truck, which I was not aware of until, man, just a few days before I actually traded it in. The UV axle, uh, the bushing around it, or the rubber seal, whatever you call it, actually cracked. And I believe it didn't crack, it ripped, it tore. And I believe that was because of the bad angle created, uh, whoops, this way, on that truck. It created such a severe angle that it tore it. That was a bummer. All the fluid inside leaked out, probably about a $1,500 uh, fix or something like that. I do not want to run into that again, particularly if you run the risk of damaging other more expensive components just to lift the truck up in the air. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.